Welcome to a world where shadows come to life and every creak of the floor sends chills down your spine. Before we dive into tonight's tale, make sure to grab your headphones and find a cozy spot. The eerie whispers and unsettling sounds are best experienced up close, and listening through headphones will make every spine-tingling detail come alive. As darkness falls and you prepare for sleep, let our story wrap you in its chilling embrace. Are you ready to face your fears? Close your eyes, and let the terror begin. In 2023, I began subletting a cabin for a couple of months due to conflicts with my dad, which led me to move out. The primary renter of the apartment was dealing with personal issues that forced him to leave, so I'll just refer to him as my landlord for simplicity. The cabin was an entire unit rented month to month, which was perfect for my temporarily difficult situation. The cabin had two floors, a small kitchen, a decent sized living area, and a bedroom accessible via a small staircase. The upstairs bedroom had a quirky hatch-like door. By the time I had been there for a month, I had already paid for the second month's rent, so I was fully settled in. The cabin was located at the end of a dirt road, alongside a few similarly sized cabins. One of those appeared to be vacant, as I never saw cars or lights there, while I knew others were inhabited, though I had never met the neighbors. Working 12-hour shifts left me utterly exhausted when I got home, so I would typically go straight to bed, often watching TV until I fell asleep. On one such night, I made a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and a protein shake for a late night meal, then went to bed. I always shut the hatch door at night, I find it uncomfortable to have the entrance to my bedroom open, as it makes me feel exposed. Unfortunately, this door didn't have a lock, and the cabin felt more suited for one person or a couple. While I was watching TV in bed, I suddenly heard a voice from downstairs asking, who's up there? My heart dropped as I shot upright. The voice sounded like it came from inside the house, but it could have been from outside. I grabbed the TV remote to turn it off, crawled over to the circular window above the bed, and looked out. It was too dark to see anyone. I called out, who's there? But the silence that followed prompted me to get off the bed and approach the door. I lifted the hatch and peered down the staircase. I even called my dad's name, hoping he had come over, but there was no reply. Terrified, I descended the stairs, flicking on the first light switch I passed, illuminating the living room as I expected. Despite my fear, I tried to rationalize it as someone outside. I turned on the front porch light and peered out, but there was no one around. Confused, I turned off the living room light and climbed back up to my bedroom, shutting the hatch behind me. I was wide awake now, so I turned the TV back on. But not even five minutes later, I heard loud banging on the bedroom door from below. It sounded angry, almost as if someone intended to scare me. At that moment, I knew for sure someone was in the house. I left the TV on but stayed completely still, too scared to move. The most frightening part was that whoever was downstairs could easily open the door since it had no lock. I remained silent for about 20 minutes, and when I felt brave enough to move, I looked for my phone. Of course, it wasn't on my nightstand, I may have left it downstairs. So. I cautiously opened my bedroom door and looked down the stairs, the flickering light from the TV casting shadows. I quietly made my way downstairs, and instead of turning on any lights, I dashed out the back door, barefoot, and ran to the nearest neighbor's house, where I saw lights on. I knocked repeatedly and soon noticed someone peering at me through the window. I shouted through the glass explaining that I was his neighbor and needed a phone to call the police. He definitely heard me, but he just stared at me, which was unsettling. Realizing he wasn't responding, I began to back away from the door, feeling increasingly uneasy. I looked around and saw no other houses nearby with their lights on. For a moment, I considered that this man might be involved. 
I returned to my rental through the back door, which was still closed as I had left it. I went inside, locked the door, and turned on every light in the small house, searching not just for an intruder but also for my phone. Eventually, I found it in my car, having left it in the center console. I went back inside, the TV still on in the bedroom. As I climbed the stairs, I saw a man sitting on my bed, staring at the TV. I screamed, and he turned his head slowly to look at me. Before I could react further, I bolted down the stairs and outside, where I called 911 from my phone. Sitting in my locked car, I watched the house while on the line with the operator. I saw someone walking past the backyard, disappearing into the woods. I informed the operator, and soon a police car arrived. One officer checked the house, including the upstairs room. After I told him I saw someone likely escaping into the woods, he asked if I had another place to stay that night. Swallowing my pride, I went back to my dad's house after packing some essentials. The next day, I returned to the cabin to gather the rest of my things. Luckily, the landlord agreed to refund some of my money and asked me what the man looked like. After that, he didn't ask any more questions, which struck me as odd. There was something unusual about the entire situation, from the creepy neighbor ignoring me to my landlord's sudden urgency to move out and the mysterious intruder. Perhaps it was all connected, or maybe I was just overthinking it. And hid behind a big rock I heard what sounded like a middle-aged man not far away say I think. She went into the woods and then to my horror what sounded like three young girls with one of them responding okay. Sir I'll see if we can find her now I wasn't fearing for my life I was worrying I was going to be forced into whatever sick group this was I was covering my mouth trying not to make any sound when I heard the man say whoever finds her doesn't have to drink the blood to tonight a million thoughts ran through my head is this some sort of satanic cult are these girls kidnapped will i become one of them i spent what felt like an eternity sitting behind the rock being scared of any sound that i could hear then to my relief i heard cop sir nearby i stayed there just to be safe when i felt the courage to look from behind the rock i saw red and blue lights right outside the forest i ran out screaming for help and the cops came to me and said ma'am do you know about this body i was confused and said what body then i saw in front of the cop car the most gruesome thing i will ever see it was what looked like a naked young woman gutted blood everywhere there was no van in sight i then explained everything to the cops the car the man the girls who had to drink the blood the cops said they'd look into it and were nice enough to drive me home that night when i couldn't sleep i looked out my window to see the van the same one from before d driving slowly without its lights on down my street this time i was smart and wrote down the license plate i called the cops immediately and told then what i saw and gave the license plate number as expected when the cops came the van was long gone but what they told me is what will horrify me to this day the cops said we checked the license plate number it's a plate registered in south dakota but the thing is we checked with other precincts around the country and they've gotten reports tonight that there was also a suspicious van with that license plate one in vermont one in nevada one in alaska and one in texas they said we'll call you if we get any more information the cops left and i never got a call i don't really believe in the paranormal so my best guess is that it was some sort of cult that used fake license plates to do their sick 
things all across the country, but I guess I'll never know I moved out of Indiana now I make sure when I see something suspicious I bolt music. My wife and I live in a normal suburb we have normal jobs normal lives next to normal neighbors we live the I guess. You'd say standard American lifestyle that most of us are taught by our parents to achieve me sitting down to write this story is already saying something because I'm not a writer the last time I typed something out this long was the last paper I wrote in college but something happened not that long ago that no one can explain in it still scares us to this day my wife Gianna and I had a normal day in after work we decided to go out to eat for a change and we got back around 9 o'clock we don't stay up very late on work nights so by 9.30 we were brushing our teeth getting ready for bed by 10 o'clock we were in bed and we usually shut the lights off at 11 o'clock we either read our books or watch our show tonight we were watching our show then the phone Rang G.I. told me not to answer it anyone. Calling at this hour can't be good news. I agreed with her, but for that reason I said I should pick it up in case it's an emergency so I reached over for the phone next to the bed to pick it up but it stopped ringing before I could actually lift the receiver that old. Landline was trashed the second the call. Stop the caller ID would disappear. And there wasn't a way to check the call. History oh well wrong number but a few. Minutes later the phone rang again so I. Grabbed the phone and looked at the. Screen it said unknown number Gianna and. I both thought that was unusual. Especially past 10 o'clock I feel that. There's a generally accepted cut off. Time for phone calls, and that's after 9 p.m. I didn't pick up the phone, but right after it stopped ringing the phone, rang again suddenly it felt like it was an emergency like God forbid something happened to a relative so I picked up in a hurry on the other end it was the voice of my neighbor Ali asked me if I knew that man standing out in front of my house I said what are you talking about he told me to go outside and hung up I found it insanely bizarre the way he just hang up abruptly like that John's face when I told her what Al just said was a look of fear she said don't go out there I said I'm just going to look out the window I went downstairs and moved the curtain a bit to look out to the front lawn there was definitely no one standing outside I opened the front door and then the storm door and stepped out to the front stoop I looked around and looked into the bushes right in front of the house nobody so I got a little annoyed at the idea that Al would prank call us this late on a work night and also just felt a little out of character for him to do that I went back to bed and told Gianna that no one was out there and Al was probably messing with us she was just as confused by that as I was it just felt bizarre she told me to call him and so I did but it rang and went straight to voicemail so I left a voicemail saying hey Al what was that call about give me a call back then the phone rang it said unknown caller again I picked up and it was Al again saying. Before I could even say anything go. Outside there's someone standing outside. Your house he said it in a calm slow. Voice then he hung up I got up and said. Out loud all right what the hell is. Going on I told Gianna to wait here I. Went downstairs and back to the window I. Looked through the curtain and this time. I saw someone standing right at the end of our walkway where it met the sidewalk. He had a hood over his head effectively. 
covering his face to just. Blackness I was honestly shaken I opened. My door and said outside can I help you? The man just stood in place I threatened. Him with calling the police then the. House phone rang again I closed the. Front door and went to the kitchen phone. And this time noticed the caller ID. Showed my neighbor Ail's number I picked. Up and Al said in a much more normal. Voice hey I just got your voicemail what? Was that about I didn't call? You I was so confused I swore to him he. Just called me twice telling me about A. Man outside my house he sounded even. More confused than me then moments later. He said he doesn't see anyone outside my. House I went back out to look out the. Window and that man who was standing. Outside my house was gone I demanded Al. Tell me right now if this was a joke and. If I found out it wasn't he wouldn't. Tell me we'd have a problem Al claimed. He was telling the truth and he's not. Some immature prankster kind of guy he's. A very low-key respectful person I had. To put him on speaker so gee I could vouch. For me that I wasn't going crazy and. That we did in fact get two calls from. Someone who sounded just like him he did. The same and put his wife on the phone. As well to vouch for him in the end what? Could he really say though except for it? Sounds like someone was pranking us. Eventually we got off the phone but I. Was no less horrified than I was before. I had to go back downstairs one more. Time to hang up the downstairs phone and. So I looked outside one more time the. Man was still no longer there none of us. Could ever figure out this unexplainable.